six tango slash golf. Meridian. We're uh, level now in cruise flight at one six thousand. And we're on our way to Tampa intersection uh, between Martin State and Rock Hill, South Carolina. Home of uh, SkyTech Incorporated, the local dealer. Now this new Meridian is Avidyne equipped. And I wanted to discuss with you this morning the importance of running to torque instead of running to temperature. Now, I know, I know, I know. Many of you say that the temperature limit is 770 degrees continuous, and you would be correct. However, Pratt Whitney says that that limit is based on a run-out engine. In other words, the power, uh, the performance charts in the manual request that we run the aircraft at a particular density altitude at a particular torque and allow the temperature then to be what it would like to be and then when the engine is fully run out that 770 limit a temperature limit should not be exceeded so to do it the other way is called running to temperature and is not the correct way to run a turbine engine it's also true that in the Meridian, the, the Dash 42, the, uh, the PT6 Dash 42A is uh, flat rated and is uh, really not being tested to its limits anyway. However, the book uh, speaks for itself. So let's review how we're going to set this airplane up for, uh, for cruise. Now looking here at the outside air temperature, we can see that we have a, a plus 2C and our altitude is uh, 1 six thousand. So the correct way to set up for cruise is to go then to page 5-58 and 59 in the Piper Manual. I know you can't read that, but I can. And uh, we're looking now on page 5-59 and uh, without interpolation we can see that uh, 15,000 and 0 degrees IOAT is the correct setting. That yields a torque of uh, 1224, fuel flow of 295 pounds per hour, a true airspeed of 235. The important number here is the torque. So we should be setting this to uh, the torque to uh, 1224. Well now if we look at the digital gauge we can see that 1224 is really not possible. So in this case, uh, the torque is flicking between 1220 and 1230. And we're showing 183 knots indicated. And uh, 29 knots of wind on the wind triangle here at about 30 degrees off our right front. So a bit of a, bit of a headwind. The computer tells us we have a true airspeed of 241 knots and a resulting ground speed of 214. Well now the 241 is a little bit shy of the 295, uh, correction of the, uh, or correction, it's, uh, yeah, a little bit shy. Uh, well no, it's actually just about right. 235 knots is what the book calls for, and we're showing uh, 242. So within a few knots of book numbers. Our fuel flow then is 302 pounds per hour for sure. The book is calling for 295, so even without interpolation, uh, this, uh, this exercise is showing that the, the book numbers are pretty honest. And I do encourage you to run to torque and not to temperature because that's the way Pratt Whitney designed the numbers and that's how the engine is supposed to be run. Now, uh, so you say you're going to sell the airplane in a year and a half. 500 hours from now or so, well that's just fine, but it should and could affect your resale value. To that end, I highly recommend that you keep a cycle log. And additionally, there is a connector here underneath the panel below and to the right of the number two transponder, it's an RS-232 connector. If you were to call Trend Group uh, or contact them, they would be able to uh, set you up with 
uh, trend monitoring for a reasonable fee, and uh, that is analogous Thanks, cross to zero. oil Ten changes miles, in your piston aircraft. I mean, team level two two zero. There are a number of things that Pratt Whitney likes to see. One of them is cycles. A cycle is an engine start, a takeoff, a landing, and a shutdown. A takeoff and a landing is a half a cycle. A start and a shutdown, except for maintenance, is considered also a half a cycle. Now, having said that, there is a place in the log, should be, <coughs> to record these numbers in addition to the temperatures and the performance numbers uh, that uh, the ECTM is also recording. Well, in short, run to torque, not temperature. Keep a cycle log so that, uh, <coughs> so that if, if you uh, have those numbers from the time the aircraft is new, you can go as uh, right when he says on condition, and that will save you uh, a large amount of money on the uh, inspections. Freedom zero zero three contact Washington. Consider always a cart start unless there's a compelling reason to do otherwise. <coughs> this is a paradigm that turbine pilots should become accustomed with or accustomed to, and it uh, it's very important that you do the coolest starts you can, and that's consistent with a 28 volt start. So, in the absence of a compelling reason to do otherwise, always, always get a 28 volt start. Thank you for joining me this morning. I'm just having a great time flying here this morning, and I'm glad you could join us. I'm going to look out the window a little bit today. Enjoy the ride. It's a beautiful morning. This is Dick Rochford signing off. Papa 46 Tango slash Golf. 39 Sierra and Piedmont 570 Mesa traffic. 1230 in a mile. Opposite directions northbound at 17, southbound at 16. All right, traffic inside for Piedmont 4170. I thought that was for me. Okay, so relax and uh, thanks for joining me, and we'll talk soon. If you uh, have interest in more information on turbine engine management, please feel free to call me. 410-435-3333. Or visit my website, www.rwrpilottraining, all one word, no spaces, dot com. And there under training resources, you'll find a link to the Pratt Whitney two-day pilot familiarization course for the Papa 46 Tango. Actually, it's for the uh, PT, uh, PT6, all, all variants, and it's a very good course, and I highly recommend it. It's given twice a year, spring and fall, in St. Hubert, Canada. This is Dick Rochfort signing off from 3129 Sierra. So long.